Hi guys, it's me, Andrea. I show you a page today I make and I'm playing for the background with my Gansai Tambi and I uh, haven't used them for a while so I was up for it. What I wanted was a nice background, beautiful green bluish background for a beautiful stamp I will use. So uh, first of all I um, put a lot of water on that with a brush on that page, let it sit for a while and then I put the paint on. Uh, every now and again I spray with water when it doesn't react the way I want it to. So I want to spread that it spreads out. So, but, um, and I didn't want to color or cover, cover the whole page with the color. So I leave some white spaces. It's, yeah, I prefer that when I have white spaces, you know that. So on the wet areas I sprinkle some salt and let it dry so that the salt is it is actually soaking up the water and of course a tiny bit of the paint and it makes a nice um, effect. Next is this Kingfisher that's from Sheena Douglas and it's absolutely beautiful thing and fantastic to colorize absolutely perfect when you like that it is really perfect because of that's such a colorful bird isn't it so and I try to stick to the natural colors here um, as I say I try because this orange bit on its tummy um, was a bit difficult and I use different oranges and, and browns and at the end I managed to get it somehow by putting layers and layers and layers on top of each other you know and uh, it is something um, you have to be careful with when you're working a watercolor paper of course what I do is the way I work on it and I'm not uh, a trained watercolor artist of course not it's everything what I do is the way I do it and the way I I'm feeling comfortable with so what I do is um, most of the times I um, pick it up from from with my water tank brush from from the pencil. Sometimes I lay it down like this here and um, I saturate it really properly, and then spread it out. And between every layer, I dry it. So when you um, put some water on a watercolor paper, it breaks up the surface, of course. So when you want to go in again, it's better to, to dry it before. Um, that doesn't work again and again. So at some stage it will even peel then. But it's a way for me. When you have a good paper, you can do that several times. And that's what I do. And um, yeah, for me it works. And I... Uh, as I said, and I at the end of the day, not yet, I think I, I will go over the orange again. I sort of matched this orange color and um, made it work. Or did I already? I can't remember now. I think I will go over it again. We will see. Don't know if it's already the original color or not. I can't tell you. So that's the whole process I left in. I sped it up quite a lot that you can see how it works. Here the color, for example, wasn't blue enough for me. It was a bit too wishy-washy. So that's why I used a different blue. And of course, I can't really tell you which colors are all. I, I use that many colors, you know, and I think it is absolutely on you to try things. What You have a color chart when you have uh, colorizing pencils, don't you? So you can, sort of see which color it is and try it. So on here you can see I use a darker color here. I think it's a red brownish thing. I lay on top of the orange and that actually matches the natural color actually. That's how I achieved it. But it was sort of a brownish red thing. I cut it out and um, get some black ink around the edges because I didn't want to have the white edges. You all know that uh, you can see it and it gives, gives definitely more depth when you have the black around it. And so this is um, this mixed media pattern from Sheena Douglas. 
I bought recently and I use it here for the background. I'm not overloading the page, you know that I, I'm i more into this. Um, I want to have something going on definitely, but sorry my head, but I needed to place that really, really, yeah, on the point. So you don't know that I don't like to have the, uh, my backgrounds overloaded. and. Uh, but with this background or with this mixed media pattern, stamps is absolutely beautiful. I didn't want to, to have them first, but now I, my last um, order, they were in an offer and I thought, ah, oh, come on, why not? I really like them. I don't know, they're really fantastic, especially this pattern I really like. So I glue this little bird down and I, of course, want to have it um, at the edge here that it's not hovering here with this trick in the middle of the page and as you can see this pattern is perfect to use it with some whites in there working with my Posca and I think the Posca was perfect here because it's a very covering acrylic white acrylic paint because this Gunzai Tambe watercolor they are very very uh, pigmented and they are coming through when you're using something not that opaque so um, and for the colors here on the on the leaves I pick up this orangey type of color from the bird I didn't want to introduce another color and I really like the orange in combination with blue and green it's to me absolutely yeah it, it's to me it makes makes a page alive or brings it alive that's what I think a bit of shading here and there going in a bit darker and um, now the word and it's a German word you will learn another German word and that's completely for free <laughs> it um, is Eiszeit and that means um, Eiszeit is ice the time of the ice ice we have this word, you know, it is related to the bird, first of all. And uh, because this bird, in the German word for this bird is Eisvogel, um, ice bird, and, um, and the word Eiszeit is not related to the era, you know, to the, the period um, of, on Earth, this ice age, for example. It, I relate it to this bird. An ice side time of the ice or ice time um, in in Germany is of course. Do we say it to to this period, Earth period? Could be ice side. Yeah, we say that as well. But it could mean something frosty, you know, a frosty period between people. For example, we call ice side or it's ice ice side between these people or so. But it's here properly related to the bird to the ice fogel the iceberg, what you call kingfisher, but um, yeah, it's it's um, it's definitely a bird, um, when you see the first kingfisher in the area where you have them, it will be spring soon, so that's what we call it, ice fogel, I think. So, this is the close-up already, I'm talking and talking, and I thank you so much for watching, guys, I hope you like it, and if so, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a comment might be fantastic and if you really like it why don't you share it that would be fantastic and I hope I see you soon with my next video and I wish you a fantastic time guys bye bye